Welcome to our review on rates of reaction. First thing we need to know then is what we actually mean when we use the phrase reaction rate. And quite simply, all that means is that it's a measure of how quickly reactants are used or how quickly products are formed. And in order to work out the rate of a reaction, all you do is the amount of either reactants or products, and we divide that by the time it's taken. In quite a few chemical reactions, one of the products that we're making will be a gas. And what we've got are two possible ways that we can actually measure the volume of gas that we produce. On the left, we've got the one using an inverted measuring cylinder. So we fill the measuring cylinder right the way to the top with water, turn it upside down in a tub of water, and then you move your hand away once it's upside down. And then we ensure that a delivery tube goes underneath the measuring cylinder. So as the gas is produced in our reaction vessel, which in this case is a conical flask, the gas travels through the delivery tube into the measuring cylinder and displaces the water. So you can then just read the volume off the side of the measuring cylinder. In all likelihood, that's the way they would give you as an example method on the exam paper because they would like to ask you a follow-up question on how we could improve the recording of the volume of gas. And the answer to that question is to use a gas syringe, which is shown on the right there. So a gas syringe is just a piece of equipment. It's glass usually, and therefore you may not have been allowed to use it if your school's only got a few, because they're quite expensive. And what happens once it's connected in, as the gas is formed, it pushes the plunger out, and then you can read the volume off the side. Obviously, this is better than the measuring cylinder because there's no risk of losing gas if the delivery tube slips out from under the measuring cylinder, etc. And it's an awful lot easier to use. As you know, if you try to invert a measuring cylinder filled with water, chances are you've got a little bit of water loss at some point. So any improvements for collecting volumes of gas in an experiment, gas syringe will be your answer. The next thing they could ask you to do on the exam paper is to actually calculate the rate of a reaction. Now, what we need to do with this is you've got to work out the change in volume and the time that that change in volume took place over. So this could be from a table, in which case you can read off and just calculate the differences, or they could give you a graph like the one on the left. So if they were to ask you to calculate the actual rate of a reaction between 60 and 90 seconds then what we do is we find 60 and 90 seconds on there you then work out the change in volume between those two points you work out the change in time and then you just divide your change in volume by the change in time so we're calculating the mean gradient at that point the other type of rate they could ask you to calculate, it is at one specific point on a graph. And it won't be on a straight line. They will be asking you to do this on the part of the graph that's curved. So what we need to do here is use a tangent to the curve in order to calculate the rate. So to carry this out, in the question it will tell you at what time it wants you to work out the rate. So you find that point, and then you put a ruler against the point on the curve that you're investigating. You then adjust the angle of your ruler so there's an equal distance from the curve on each side of that point, and then you draw a line using the ruler. Convert that line into the right angle triangle like we would do on our normal rate calculation. Obviously work out your difference in the time, the difference in the volume of gas, and then just divide the volume of gas by your time. So just remember that if it is just one specific time, then you can't go and draw your normal triangle because it won't work. You've got to draw that tangent first of all. Hopefully at the end of this video, you can now explain what's meant by the term rate of reaction. You can suggest a couple of practical methods for determining rates, and you can also use graphs of rates of reaction to actually calculate the rate using either the standard right angle triangle or using a tangent and then your right angle triangle.